Flat earthers think that curvature is enough to make local levelling impossible. You'll often hear the claim that level equals flat, that spirit levels couldn't work on a sphere, buildings couldn't have level foundations, and of course some other classics like people who think they can stare at their bath water and assume that because there's no curve there, the earth can't be curved. This all stems from the same issue, an inability to conceive sphericity on a large scale. While the earth, relative to ourselves, the space we occupy and the things we create, is absolutely massive, flat earthers talk about it as though it's the size of a basketball and deny the fact that a sphere can be locally flat on a large scale. Starting with an everyday object, we're going to look at the idea of having a locally flat area on a curved surface and then we're going to use that as the basis to scale up and compare it to the Earth. So this is a 14 inch tyre from a car. This means it has a circumference of 2,234 millimetres. And if we take that down to a single degree, that's 6.2 millimetres. This is the valve cap from the same tyre, which as you can see has a flat base and the diameter of that cap is 6 millimetres. So a single cap represents just slightly under one degree of the circumference of the tyre. I took a couple of different photographs of the valve cap sitting on the tyre and it's very easy to get it to sit nice and flat and level, even at this scale. So with this particular tyre, it would take 372 of these caps to make up the entire circumference of the tyre. Next let's increase the circumference by moving up to a larger size of tyre. So this is a 17.5 inch tyre. And again we've got the same 6mm cap. For this tyre, the circumference is 2,793mm as opposed to 2,234. That gives us 7.75mm per degree. So approximately one and a third these caps would fit within a degree and that means in this case we would need 465.5 valve caps to make up the entire circumference of the 17 half inch tyre. And again if we look at a couple of different photographs obviously with it having a wider radius the effective arc is shallower which means it sits nice and level on top of the tyre taking up the space of just under a degree. So you can do this type of everyday demonstration for yourself. You can take the valve cap from a tyre and you can see that it sits nice and level on top of the tyre and obviously the greater the circumference and to the scale of the valve cap, the area that it sits on begins to have a shallower and shallower curve moving more and more towards flat. And this funky little graphic is just a demonstration of that showing circles of increasing size and as they get larger and larger you can see that the deviation between straight and curved becomes much less. So you can achieve this by either increasing the circumference or by having an object which is obviously much much smaller in scale relative to whatever it's sitting on top of. So now we've got the basic concept of the effect of increasing the circumference and we've got the scale of the valve cap and the tyre to work with. We'll now look at the earth, do a couple of quick comparisons and then see how that all scales up. So the earth has a circumference of just over 40 million metres. So one degree of the earth's circumference would be 111,111 metres. So now looking at a couple of well-known landmarks we'll see how they scale. So this is the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway Bridge. It has a length of 38,624 metres. And if we place these to scale within a degree of the Earth, it would take 2.9 causeway bridges to take up a full degree. And in order to make the entire circumference of the Earth, it would take 1,035 of them. So just a quick reminder of how this is scaling up. The valve cap, which sat level within just under a degree on the 14 inch tyre, we needed 372 of them 
to make the entire circumference of the tyre. But when we move to the size of the earth and use an object that we know to be very long, it takes far more of them to make the circumference. So looking at another familiar landmark, something we can better grasp the scale of locally, this is the Empire State Building. On its long side, the foundations are 129.2 metres in length. So with respect to the full size of the earth, we need 860 Empire State Buildings arranged side by side to take up a single degree. So what we're saying is that to scale, 860 of these buildings will take up a space just slightly more than what the valve cap is taking up on the tyre. So by using this everyday object, the tyre and the valve cap, to establish a scale that we can relate to, and we can see that an object with a flat base can be put to rest on the curved surface without any problem, and then relate that up to the size of the earth using the Empire State Building as a guide. If you consider the fact that it takes over 800 of these to fill the same area that the valve cap is taking up, then scale that right back again to the actual Empire State Building itself, to just one of them. In other words, look at the valve cap, look at the space it's taking up on the tyre, and then divide that by over 800. It would be an area that at this scale in this photograph would be too small to even show. And flat earthers are going to sit there with a straight face and try and tell us that they can stare at a bath or a glass of water and use that to determine the flatness of the earth. So again, this all comes back to this problem that flat earthers have with their inability to process or conceptualise sphericity on a very large scale to deal with three dimensions instead of two. They literally think too small to comprehend how the Earth should behave and present itself to us in reality. Okay guys, so hopefully that little exercise made some kind of sense to you. And we'll leave it at that. Cheers. Oh, hi. Can I speak to Nathan Oakley, please? I'm afraid Mr. Oakley might be rather busy at the moment. He's just getting ready to go into the studio. Yep, if you can just tell him it's Al K from YouTube, I'm sure he'll take the call. Please hold. Nathan Oakley. Hey Nate, I'm just wondering if you can help me out. I'm just throwing together another video for YouTube and I've run into a bit of a problem and somebody told me you were the guy to speak to. Yeah. Well, you see, this video is all about scale and I've been using the metric system and I've got the length of the Lake Pontchartrain bridge in metres and I'm just wondering if you can tell me how to convert it to kilometres. Bastard. Fuck off. Hello? Hello, Nathan? Hmm. Oh well. Charming. What a prick.